Look at me go, look at me flex, that's not a plane More like a jet, I heard the song, we ain't impressed Then she heard me, now she undressed To make it all worse, I gotta check You want a verse, double the check I wanted this, then I got this I wanna want that, I'ma get that This how I look when you threaten and kill it I gave a warning and they didn't listen I'm at the ceiling and that's independent She in the feelings and that's till they finish I've been around in your cities and states I take it down on your biddies today I wanna cry for the busiest days You just a clown with your minimum wage, work Okay, so I'm sitting here with the S23 Plus and I've been using it for the past couple of days and there's only one question in my mind that just keeps eating at me and that's, is this the entry level smartphone of the year? So first off, welcome back to the video. Today we're taking a closer look at the S23, S23 Plus. Here in my hands, I'm currently holding the S23 Plus and I gotta say guys, for the most part, this might just be my favorite phone of the year. For the most part, these phones are quite similar to the ones from last year but not entirely, they do have their differences. So this time around the S23 and the S23 Plus, we're looking at similar numbers from last year. The S23 has a 6.1 inch 1080p OLED display and the S23 Plus has a 6.6 .6 inch 1080p OLED display as well. Now in terms of battery, we're also looking at some slight improvements. We're looking at 3900 milliamp hour battery for the S23 and we're also looking at 4700 milliamp hour battery for the S23 Plus. So for the most part, there's not major improvements but some slight improvements for them from last year and I would say that across the board, it's pretty solid. Now I must admit that I really love the new slick design of the S23. I think it's super simple. The new camera layout and the overall design of the phone is very, very clean, super simple. I, I gotta say, I really love it. But let's admit it, guys, for the most part, it's simple nature and its design is very prone to getting scratches on the screen and getting damage on the back end of the phone. But luckily enough, today's sponsor has us covered. Casetify is an innovator in designing phone cases and accessories to keep your devices protected. How many times have you had a phone case that looked cool, yeah, but didn't protect your phone when needed most? Yeah, you probably remember that one embarrassing time where that happened to you. Happens to the best of us. But Casetify can change that for you. Not only do you have one of the widest selection of models for all the new smartphones, but you also benefit from well-constructed cases that are made from recycled phone cases, which is always nice knowing that your purchase is helping the environment. The new clear case from Casetify provides really good shock resistance and drop protection. Its lightweight form also enables you to use your phone with ease and feel safe at all times. Most recently, the wrist ropes became available as an accessory, allowing you to have extra safety whilst maintaining style. Now, I'll be honest and I'll say that I wasn't too convinced about the wrist rope at first, now I just didn't see the use in it. But the second I put it on with the case and I was using it, honestly, I gotta admit, it started to grow on me. And you have to admit, the clear case with the wrist rope combo on this new Samsung does look really nice. Now, Casetify was nice enough and decided to hook us up with a discount code. You can use the code on screen right now to get yourselves 15% off your whole order. The great thing about their website is that you'll be able to create your own phone cases and customize the look of it. So if you want to add like, for example, some text on the case or even an image or in the best case scenario, you want to do both, you can totally do that with their website as the customization process is really simple. Now, naturally, I've left a link in the description down below where you guys can click on it and it will take you straight to the website. The products featured in this video are brand new. It's part of the new release for the Samsung S23 lineup. So if you guys want to snag yourself some of the products featured in this video, go ahead and click that link in the description down below and make sure to use code 15 Victor Dia at checkout to get yourselves 15% off the whole order. Thank you once again, Casetify, for sponsoring this video. Getting back to the S23 Plus, the base model now offers 128 gigabytes base storage, which is pretty standard. I mean, we've pretty much seen that with a lot of other phones. And the S23 Plus now offers 256 gigabytes standard storage, which is twice the amount of 128, which obviously simple math adds up. But I think that's really convenient for the, for the most people. Obviously, since you're getting a slightly bigger phone, bigger body definitely enables you to have a bigger battery as we saw with the numbers earlier. But I love the fact that it doesn't stop Samsung from also giving you more storage because technically, why wouldn't you be able to get more storage, right? You're getting, you're getting a bigger phone. So it just kind of makes sense. I went ahead online and I searched up the exact details for the thickness of the phone and the S22 had a 7.6 millimeter thickness overall. And the S23 also seems to be having the exact same thickness on paper, which is also 7.6 millimeters. But for some reason that I honestly can't really explain, it feels like this phone is a little bit sturdier. It feels like it has a slightly thicker outline to it. And I'm, as I said, on paper, it doesn't say so, but it feels in hands a little different. It just feels a little more sturdy. Also a little bit heavier than the last one, which is also kind of ironic because the S22 has 
195 grams and this one is 196 grams so obviously give or take there's a gram extra there but that wouldn't be a significant difference i still can't quite put my finger on it but it feels a little sturdier feels a little more high quality i think the overall thickness of the foam might be a little different i don't know if the numbers online are not accurate but i gotta say for the most part guys that build quality feels a little more premium on this one so talking about premium and refreshing we're also looking at adaptive refresh rate across the board for the whole s23 lineup now naturally the s23 ultra is always going to have some more premium specs it definitely has the adaptive refresh rate but i do love that this simple fact samsung doesn't seem to cut short on performance to value ratio with their products so the s23 and the s23 plus also have adaptive refresh rate which peaks at 120 hertz which is honestly great but it seems that Samsung seems to be doing this much better than other companies. Okay, so let me explain really quickly what I mean by this. So for example, Samsung's flagship phone of last year, S22 Ultra, had some of the more premium specs. We had 120 hertz refresh rate, 120 megapixel main camera, which was honestly surprising for last year. Still think that's pretty impressive. It gets even better this year. Trust me, the S23 Ultra has 200 megapixel main camera, but that's a little bit besides the point. Overall, it had premium specs. If you look at the flagship phone from Apple, which was the iPhone 14 Pro, which, you know, by this time and point, it's still their flagship phone, had 48 megapixel camera, and they had the adaptive refresh rate, which was also at a peak of 120 hertz refresh rate. So now on the other hand, if you take their entry level phones, Samsung's S22 had a peak refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is the exact same as the Pro model, and iPhone's entry level phone, which was the iPhone 14, and <laughs> Let's be honest, it wasn't Apple's best and brightest, but point is that phone had a peak refresh rate of 60 hertz, which is half of what the entry-level phone from Samsung was able to give you. Now, for the most part, I know that companies have their decisions and it's not always the same thing, but I really wonder why Samsung was able to give us 120 hertz on their entry-level model and on their pro model, and Apple was still incapable of doing that, which still kind of baffles me a little bit. Now, other companies are also kind of implementing the system. We had the last iteration of the Google Pixel, so Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. One thing I really liked about that specific lineup is that the Pixel 7 Pro obviously had the more premium features, so a peak refresh rate of 120 hertz, but the Pixel 7, which was the little brother of the Pixel 7 Pro, doesn't feel like it fell short because its peak refresh rate was at 90 hertz. So sure, here I'm getting in, bit in the details and a lot of people might not even notice, the higher refresh rate for the most part as a techie we definitely notice these things it just flashes to our eyes but it still kind of surprises me how google was able to give you 90 hertz refresh rate on their entry level phone 120 hertz on their pro phone samsung was able to give you 120 hertz on both of their phones which is obviously probably the best at the moment and then you have apple who gave you 120 hertz on their pro model which is pretty standard and then you have the entry level which is 60 hertz which is honestly just but honestly, that's a different topic for another video. Just wanted to mention that I really love, really appreciate the simple fact that Samsung provides us with that specific aspect in both of the phones. It doesn't feel like one of the phones is falling short. It feels like they're both from the same family, just a bit of differences in their specs. Okay, so now with all that being said, there's one main question. What's the bigger improvements? What's the bigger changes with the S23? You're looking at a brand new chip and new cameras. So this time around the S23 Plus, it's rocking the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. Pretty much a state-of-the-art chip, really, really good. Has some of the best performance numbers out there on the market at the moment. Samsung has also mentioned that it has a higher max clock speed, which means overall better performance on the phone. Now, it's not a major difference, I would say, from last year, but then again, you really do see the performance boost if you are coming from an older phone. So say maybe the S20 or the iPhone 12, pretty much any of those phones in that category. So even if you go further back, like 11 Pro or S21 or any of that, any of those phones in that category, if you're upgrading from those specific phones to this new one, then, the, then you will definitely benefit from the performance boost and that new chip inside. Now the cameras also have gotten a small refresh across the board. We're looking at new sensors, better image processing, new AI remastering of photos. So really overall, just some solid improvements. Now the cameras have the same linear layout as last year, but you'll notice how this time the cameras don't have that harness around them, which was kind of controversial. Some people liked that on the S22, some people didn't. I personally was quite a fan of it. I thought it was really good. Now I wasn't really bothered by the harness design. I was more of a fan of just the simple linear design, which they definitely have kept with the S23 lineup. And I think it's just really clean. It looks really, really nice. 
definitely a little bit better than the oven design from Apple's phones. Talking about the linear camera setup, so you're looking at a 50 megapixel main camera, which is really, really good, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a three times telephoto. So it definitely gives you a wide range of capacity in terms of photo shooting. On the aspect of the cameras, you're still able to shoot some really high quality videos. You can peak all the way up to 8K 30 FPS, which seems a little bit mind blowing. You can shoot really high quality videos, so like 8K on a mobile phone. Seems a little bit absurd, but I guarantee you it works on the S23. We also had it on the S22, so it's technically not a new feature, but it's really nice to know that we still have it on this phone. <laughs> I really don't see how it can get any better than this. 8K footage on a smartphone is quite impressive for the most part. So now really quickly in terms of similarities to the S22, the button layout is roughly the same. So you'll obviously find your power button and your volume rockers up and down on the same side, which happens to be on the right hand side if, when you're looking at the screen. Obviously, we still have the same method of charging. We have USB-C, which I really like. I really hope in the near future, we're going to see a time and point where pretty much all devices will be running on USB-C. This is going to be so much easier to just have one cable to charge all your devices. I mean, it would be um, amazing, honestly, but you know how it is with these companies sometimes. Now, another aspect that I really appreciate about this phone is the fast charging. So you're looking at 45 maximum watt charging on the phone. Really, really good as a lot of the phones nowadays charge fast. Now, just to put you guys a bit in perspective, I have a 20 watt charger on my everyday device, so I def don't really see myself needing more. My 20 watt charger pretty much juices up my phone from like, I would say 15, 17, 17% all the way up to 100% in roughly like an hour and a half, sometimes two, depending on the days. I, I honestly don't really know. The, but the 45 watt charger for the S23 juices up the phone in just under an hour, which is honestly quite fascinating it's impressive it has good battery life overall and it also charges really fast which is honestly it, it's like the best of both worlds it's super convenient most of the people are going to be getting away with it just fine if anything i think a lot of you guys are going to be really impressed with the weight with the fast charging on the phone and the battery life on the phone is also significantly better than a lot of other smartphones right now another feature i really find quite interesting and really awesome it's just the small detail it's nothing too crazy i really love that you can pause midway recording so you can start shooting something pause and then start re-recording again so let me show you what i mean and so there you go i just stopped the recording this is not me editing and on my computer this is literally me using the pause button on the recording pause switch cameras and i'm recording again on the back end of the phone and so now here we are back on the front facing camera it's, it's a nice little feature you can just pause midway recording so you'll start recording and then you can pause and then you can start recording again on the same clip and it's kind of creating this natural cut it's basically editing on the go but you're not actually editing you're only pressing a button and it creates this natural cut which looks pretty smooth so gotta say pretty impressed with that i think it's great such a small detail such a small feature but goes a long way in my video on the S22, I mentioned how the regular 6.1 inch wasn't exactly the peak in terms of battery life. It kind of seemed to die roughly after four, after five, maybe six hours of battery time, like run on time. S23 Plus though, definitely holds up a little bit better. So last year with the S22, S22 Plus, S22 Plus was definitely the favorite one. I think it was the better option. This year, it's clearly a no brainer for me. The S23 Plus is the better option. I would have to say right now, it's, it's, it's kind of the sweet spot. It has a perfect size in terms of display. It has just the right amount of thickness to the phone. Feels premium, feels quality. It also has kind of like that matte finish in the back. I know some of you guys like the glossy finish, but not also with the new camera layout. I gotta say, you combine all these things together and it pretty much gives you one of the best entry level smartphones at the moment. I, I gotta admit that as of right now, sure, the year just started. It's only the beginning of, it's only mid February, but I'm really gonna stick by and say that this might just be the entry level smartphone of the year. Obviously, I would love to hear what you guys have to think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. We can get a conversation started in there. Now, naturally, the S23 Plus doesn't really compare to the S23 Ultra. This is the flagship phone. This is definitely the premium one. I'll be having a coverage on this really soon. I'm just still working on it, trying to get the most out of that phone. But yeah, S23 Plus, I have to say, probably my favorite phone right now. Now, with that being said, as always, guys, I wish you the best of luck in everything you do, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Deuces.